Well, hello. Uh, I've persuaded you to click on this video to understand a little bit more about the HMRC API specification, that is, the documentation written by HMRC for how making tax digital works. And why bother? Well, the reason I suggest it's a good idea for people who are not technicians but who use MTD software to understand a little bit about the API is that in the end, the same data is sent by all the MTD software to HMRC and the same data is received from HMRC and the same validation rules are used by HMRC. So if you're getting something that's slightly unusual and you don't really quite know what's going on, um, a simple solution is to see what the specification says because you know what can be sent. And I, I know from discussions with accountants and bookkeepers there's still some uncertainty about exactly how MTD ITSA works. Obviously, the same uncertainty isn't there for MTD VAT. Um, and one way of getting information to find out what's actually going on is to look at the specification. Now, at the end of this particular video and in the, in the description, I will put the links, the URLs for all the web pages I'm looking at here so that you can look at those and see um, what's going on. But then we start with the API, the documentation itself, which looks at not just making tax digital, but all the other things. And we have a link to this later on. So you can see here a list of all sorts of different things, including customs, corporation tax, the old APIs, the new APIs, those which are REST and those which are XML. Uh, and I'm going to start by looking at VAT. And I'll start by looking at the specification for submitting VAT returns. Reason for that is pretty well everybody with any experience as accounting or bookkeeping knows how to submit a VAT return, what what figures are sent, what the seven what the nine boxes are. And so if you go on to the VAT D VAT MTD API, you will then be able to see that there are in fact what's called five endpoints, that is five different ways in which you can talk to the MTD servers here. All right, these five. Um which are different ways of dealing with um, VAT, such as finding out the VAT obligations, finding out what VAT returns you've got to do, submitting a VAT return, viewing a VAT return, retrieving VAT liabilities, what do you owe them, and retrieving records of what payments you've made. And that all of that's used by MTD suppliers to provide information through the MTD software. And let's worry about submitting a VAT return. And you see all of this stuff here. And in the middle of it, you have this gobbledygook here, which is known as JSON. And if we go on to my page about that, JSON is JavaScript Standard Object Notation. And it's a way of sending information so that it's machine readable. That is, that the computer can understand it um, without a human being or some AI system, you know, working out what it means. And if you see here, this, this is the information that's sent in the VAT return. And you'll see that that information is the same. In fact, I've just copied it from here on, on, the, on the specification itself. So if we go back to this here. Um, now, within the specification, it will also give information about what it, each of these bits of information means. So you have, for instance, net VAT due without spaces is net space VAT space due which is what's called camel case because the first character is lowercase and then you have uppercase at the start of each letter. And because computers don't like spaces in names of data and field names, property names, um, we, we, we lose all the spaces and we then have it specified as netvat due NET VAT DUE with camel case. But it's box five. It's the amount of VAT you've got to either pay HMRC or they're going to pay you one of these odd things where it's always a positive number and you have to work out from the rest of the data whether it's paid one way or another, uh, whether it's reclaimed or actually paid as VAT. So um, this this definition here, so if I, if I sort of um, put a box around it, that definition here is the definition that you will find if you look at the specification and go a bit further down. All of the details are specified here. So you can see what data is sent. And there was an element of confusion about MTD VAT to start out with as to whether any more information was being sent than the nine boxes. 
And in fact, nope, it's just the nine boxes. This information is there in the specification. You can go back to source and check out everything that's in there. So that's how it works for VAT and the same principles. Now, well, let's, let's go on to one other little point as well. The URL, that's the web address also is tells you don't need to worry about it because you never type these things in they're always done by the software but it shows you what varies from information that's sent to the um so to to um hmrc so if we look for instance at this bit up here um vrn the vat registration number that that varies for each taxpayer so the the the, the web address will be whatever the domain name is for um, HMRC's server which is different for the sandbox then organization slash VAT slash and then the VAT number and then return so obviously if you haven't got a VAT number you can't submit a VAT return and one other thing I think that's and oh, just one little thing on that is that you have a thing called post get put patch or delete and again if we go back to the the, the return here you can see if we go up a little bit that it's it's a post thing well, Get are when it's getting information, post is when it's submitting information. And you can also have get and put and patch and delete. Delete is obviously when it's deleting things. Nothing for VAT because you don't delete a VAT return, but when it comes to uh, its uh, in income tax self-assessment, you might delete things. So th those different methods, as they're called, can be used there. And then we can look at what comes back. And what comes back is a response code and any response code that starts with the number two is a successful code. So it's 201 for it's created a response. And this is the response we get back. Again, you can see this in the specification. So if we go down, let me find it where it is in the specification. If we go down here, you see I've only just copied this little bit out. And again, within this, it's, it indicates whether or not there's a direct debit. So in fact, if you look at the payment indicator, you can see that the payment indicator indicates if it's a direct debit or whatever. So, um, and that, that's again useful information. Not necessarily, it isn't necessarily provided by the MTD software. So that's something to be aware of. And then we can say what, what the other possible response codes are because response codes, if they're not two numbers starting with two, um, then they indicate some form of error. And one of the difficulties is knowing what the error is, because if we look at these selection of response codes, it could be like an invalid VAT return. So if we look at this one here, which is an invalid VAT return, we could have a duplicate submission, which is, um, I messed that one up. I'll do that the other way around. A duplicate submission, which is, if I click on that one, there we go. Here's a duplicate submission here, or the eternal client or agent north authorized um, and that one is when you haven't put the right codes in for the authorization or use not use the admin account for validation or it's something wrong with the asa sadly there isn't enough granularity as they call it there's not enough detail for the mtt software surprise provider to tell the end user precisely where the authorization has gone wrong but i think people have got used to that with vat and then there's this one as well which is a five series number which means have a cup of tea because something's gone wrong at the other end so it could be for instance that hmr have actually switched it off to fix it in some way or just something's broken for a bit and if it's a five series error you know it's not the fault of your mtd supplier it's definitely something M hmrc are doing so in essence you're not going to be able to do much with mtd whilst there are five series errors going on and if you look at their records to say what's going on um, in terms of when the system's down, you might find it down for a little bit for testing or for updating the system. So it is worth having some basic understanding of the numbers uh, and that five series numbers are ones where it's you've just got to wait a little bit really because otherwise you look for solutions when in fact you haven't got a solution. So so those, those are those sorts of different things and they apply for um, both, both of these things. Now then if we look at... at income tax ITSA income tax self-assessment that's a lot more complicated simply because there's a lot more data that's required because you can have income tax capital gains tax you've got property income you've got um, self-employment information you've got things like venture capital trusts and obviously if people don't have that sort of income or they haven't if they don't want to claim for instance charitable contributions you don't have to worry about providing that information to HMRC uh, but again, 
there are uses here to being able to look at the specification. So if we look at self-assessment, for instance, which is here, and we go down and we look, these are various different endpoints, and we look at um, a, a self-employment periodic update. This is something that um, has people quite interested. You can see that actually each period of update has a, a, a date range, because obviously it doesn't have to be a quarter, it can be a month, it could be, I think, a week, but I don't think anyone's going to submit weekly returns. We've done some monthly ones and we've done some quarterly ones, uh, but we haven't done any more frequently than that. And obviously if you've got somebody who has um, the under £85,000 a year, they don't have to provide full detail. They can actually provide the short form of just uh, consolidated expenses rather than um, providing all the analysis of expenses. But it's it's the same as SO, SA103S and SA103F, um, where you have somebody who is um, submitting self-employed information based on details like costs of good, well, sales good. Now, it's called costs of good bought, but actually that, again, is box 17 on the form. And if we look further down, we can see... Um, if we look at these specifications here, what these different things are. So costs of goods, goods bought for resale or goods used, the amount and the disallowable amount, payments to subcontractors. So again, this is all going to be provided by the MTD software supplier. And the similar pr principle applies for property and all these different things. So, And you can look that up and find out. So if you have any uncertainty about it, this is how you can get certainty or at least you can ask your MTD supplier to show you what specification they're using. And they, if they don't know the answer to that, you've got something to worry about. Um, and then if we look a little bit further on, at the end of the year, um, there is the end of period submission, EOPS. And we can look at what's sent in that from the end, end of period statement, right? Which is effectively just saying, those I agree those figures. And there's some questions that have been asked about what's submitted in that. Well, you can see here it posts something, so it sends some data, and it sends an end of period statement for a national insurance number, and it sends basically the accounting period um, and whether it's finished. So it doesn't send any figures. The end of period statement is just saying, yes, okay, those figures are right. I agree those figures. That's what the taxpayer is doing from that. But we can use, as people know, they can do quarterly figures on a cash basis. And then if needs be, the accountant can use separate software or the same software to submit adjustments at the end of the year for accruals and prepayments. Um, and that's done by using a different API, a different endpoint, the business source adjustable summary. And again, that's available. And as I said, I've put the link to that in, in the comments and at the end of this video. And so here we have the business source adjustable summary. And we can see from this, if we go down here for self-employment, for instance, if we submit a, a summary, if we go down here, we can see that the expenses and the and the, the disallowable expenses are submitted as adjustments. So if we say payments to subcontractors here, it's the adjustment. So if it's got to be increased, it's a positive number. If it's got to be reduced, it's a negative number. Um, but that, again, can be done by the MTD software. So you don't actually have to necessarily send the calculation. Um, you have to necessarily do the calculation, just get the right figure, and then your MTD software can send that. So I, I, I put highlight that in this here. So although end-of-year adjustments are sent to, to HMRC as an adjustment figure, it doesn't require the user to calculate it. And the user can use MTD software to work out what the adjustment is, and it depends on how it's written. And of course, you can get from the APIs what submissions have already gone in. So you can work out what the right figure is. You can get your software to find out what it's already got, and it can calculate the difference and submit that. Now, that will vary from software provider to software provider, but that's, you know, that, that's, that's the nature of MTD, that it's, um, you, there's, a, there's a market in software providers, and they do things in different ways. And one can, cannot say necessarily there are perfect ways of doing things. So... If we go on to the final point here, these are the web pages that I've linked to, and I shall make sure that when I put this on YouTube, um, that, that they're available there. So you can just click on them and see, see those links and follow it through. And hopefully you've got a better idea now of um, 
what the API specification is about and how it can actually provide useful information that explains exactly what's going on so that you're not necessarily reliant on people's text descriptions uh, that may or may not be accurate. You can confirm whether it's true or not. Well, thank you for listening to this video.